and welcome to the What to Read Next podcast. In this podcast, your host, Lori and me, will invite a bookish guest to share their favorite book recommendation. If you share a passion for books and know what's looking for your next read, then join us. Welcome to the What to Read Next podcast. Today, we're turning things around and we have my friend, Keeney, coming to the show to interview me. So hi, Keeney. Hi, Laura. I'm so excited to be here again um, to chat with you and to chat a little bit more about you. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. (laughs) It'll be interesting to be in the hot seat. (laughs) Yes, you're in the hot seat now, Laura. Tell us everything. Yeah. So um, first, just tell us a little bit about you. Like, who who is Laura? (laughs) (laughs) So a little bit about me. I am a voracious reader. I've been reading since I was like, 10 or 11 um, okay. English class I, I grew up in Puerto Rico so I went to a bilingual school of Spanish and English and so in sixth grade my English class my English teacher even though she was Cuban she made us speak English at all times and so mm-hmm. one of the things that she encouraged us to do was to read a book and so that's how I discovered Baby Search Club like it was just basically it was a class assignment and I just dis- discovered Baby Search Club and I devour it and then I just kept reading more and more. So a way for me to learn English was through reading. And so I've been a voracious reader ever since growing I can remember. Mm-hmm. Like I remember traveling to Disney World and be in line and just having a book. <laughs> or every time we travel to like Florida or to New York, I would need to go to the bookstore and buy all the books that were not available in Puerto Rico. So it was just like... I had collections. So I read Baby Search Club, um, Sweet Valley Twins, Sweet Valley High. And I think for most of my teenage years, I read Sweet Valley High. Like, okay. I devour them. Um, I read them now, and they're really problematic. <laughs> but at the time, they were great. Sure. sure. So, so actually, and so during my 2000s, 2010, I read a lot of, like, what was Chicklet, so Jane Green. Uh, Helen Flowings, like all these like very like popular trade paperback uh, novels. And so I wasn't mm-hmm. a romance reader until 2016. Like it was just like okay. I read, I read a lot of romantic elements, but it was never like purely romance, like happily we're after all those different things. I, I didn't discover that until later on in life. Um, okay. So so most of my reading has been on and off, like I'll find an author and I'll devour the backlist and then I'll just do the same thing and over and over. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until 2016 that I had, a, I had another podcast and we'll talk about that. Um, and the podcast guest shared that she shared about adult reading and I was like, oh, this is curious. And so she gave me a list of recommendations and I devour her list of recommendations and she mentioned YouTube as a place to get recommendations. And I was like, this is interesting. Let me check it out. And so mm-hmm. I discovered like the big YouTubers who were reading YA fantasy at a time. And mm-hmm. I started I started reading those books because they were like recommended. So this is a time where Avatar was a big one. So of course, in Thorn of Roses, uh, Thorn of Glass, all the Sarah J. Mass. And okay. one of the YouTubers that I follow start mentioning new adult and I was like this is interesting and a little background I used to work in the college like I work in higher education for about 10 years like I got a master's degree I work at NYU Pace University and so college life was something I was familiar with and so it's interesting to read about college life like what it looks like you know what my students were thinking about at the time I had left that field so Mm -hmm. I had some separation from it so I was like well let me just give it a try so I discovered New Adult, and I binge read every single list that they gave you. So mm-hmm. I read the Dicta Chiu series. I read On Dublin Street. I read pretty much whatever was like New Jennifer Almutron's New, mm-hmm. uh, New Adult series. Like I just binge read them, and so from there I discovered it was like. Well, I kind of like romance. <laughs> so my romance reading started that. That's when I started. And I became one of those devotees who bought devours one book a day. And I had a awesome. job that allows me to do that, which I missed. <laughs> so I was like binge reading like as much books as possible. So that's been my reading journey and where I'm awesome. at. Awesome. Right. Okay. So 
which is very interesting and it's different than my journey, but in similar ways, because I think a lot of people, especially in romance, talk about how they started reading, like they'll say like, oh, I was reading my mom's paperbacks or my grandma's paperbacks or whatever, you know, which is great. And I appreciate that story. But but similar to you, I kind of came into romance a little bit late. Like I've always been a voracious reader. So for me, which it sounds like to you, for you as well, sometimes when people talk about like how they've been reading romance since they were babies, practically, mm-hmm. <laughs> it can feel a little like isolating, like, well, I never read some of that stuff and I'm never going to. So I think that's one of the things that helped us kind of like bond that, you know, we're more, I mean, I've been reading maybe for about 10 years romance, but, um, but I still consider that relatively new to the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but totally relate on all aspects of how you got here and, um, you know, new adults, I, I binge that too. And that's a great place to really start like bingeable because in the early like 2010s, new adult was like the thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there was so much of it, which is fine. And I, I read a lot of new adult and, um, but you know, it's just kind of, it's, it's for me as a person who, has talked to and interviewed people. I always love finding out their journey and figuring like, how did they get here to Mm -hmm. romance and how do they stay here? So I'm sure we'll talk more about that. But so now that you're here in romance and reading it and we're so, we, the community are so happy to have you. I I speak for everybody, but, and now that we know a little bit more about you, tell us how your 2020 is going. Well, 2020 was an interesting year, so we got to backtrack a little Mm -hmm. bit. So 2019, I made a decision after living in New York City for about 13 to 14 years that I wanted to leave New York City. And so I spent a whole year in therapy, (laughs) planning this big move. I was like, I'm moving, I'm leaving my job, I'm going to start over, I'm going to... And so originally I wanted to move to Miami because I want to be closer to my family. But then the job market was like not that good. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I had a moment in December. I was like, what if I just moved to Chicago? Mm-hmm. Side on seat. I was like, right. I'm just going to go there and just make it work. Right. <laughs> and so I took a trip to Chicago in January. I got an apartment. I mm-hmm. got to see Chicago for four days. And I was mm-hmm. like, I think this will be a good place. Mm-hmm. Um, I was talking to recruiters and I was like, jobs were happening. They were going to pay me the same amount of money I was getting in New York, but I was going to earn, you know, more and all different things. And I was like, this is great. Like, I'm I'm feeling this. So Mm -hmm. I knew February 28th, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I left my apartment in New York because that's where my lease was up. I left my apartment in New York. I left my job. I was like, (laughs) I was like, peace out. (laughs) Just going to leave this. And I just moved to Chicago and I had had some leads, but I didn't have a job. And I was like, I've done this before. So a few things about me is like, I've taken these leaps in in the past. So this is Mm -hmm. not a brand new thing for me. This is something that I've done before. Um, So I always knew that I always landed in my two feet. So I was like, okay, I'll lay in my two feet. So the first two weeks were all about unpacking and getting ready and going to job interviews and seeing Chicago. And it was like, Mm -hmm. amazing. And Mm -hmm. then... COVID hit. <laughs> Two weeks into it, COVID happened. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay. So all the job interviews that I had lined up were canceled. And mm-hmm. I was like, this is disappointing, but all right, we'll make it work. And so I spent, I would say six to eight weeks, just basically just wandering around. So I focused my attention on creative projects, like whether it's the podcast or trying to make it work and trying to read things that were, even though I, reading was a little touch and go, but I was like mm-hmm. decorating my apartment, unpacking and um and then I was like, okay, like I need a job. So I ended up landing like a temp temp position. Um I ended up landing it I I interviewed for one job and they didn't didn't hire me, but they said we have another job. Would you be interested in that job? And I was mm-hmm. like, sure, whatever. Like, I'm pretty laid back about the whole job tour situation. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't stress about it. I'm like, it always works out for me. So I ended up landing that job and it was remote. And so I worked there for about six to eight weeks. Um, they just kept extending my contract. So I was like, okay, we'll make it work. And so I realized I was like, the job market in Chicago is not that good. So I was like, 
what am I going to do if my contract ends? Like, am I going to just move back to Puerto Rico? So that was the plan. And I just, and I had a moment of thought. It was like, let me just email my old director. Mm -hmm. Let me see, you know, let her know, like, this is where I'm at. Like, you know, the move to Chicago doesn't seem to be the right thing to do in the middle of COVID. Like, (laughs) Mm -hmm. it's going to happen. And so she emails me back. She's like, let's talk. What if he? What if I offer you to come back, as long as you stay in Chicago? I cannot hire you if you're in Puerto Rico. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, we'll see. You know, yeah. like, it's not my first choice, but it's a sure. job. <laughs> you know, it's a job in the pandemic. So I'm like, not beggars can't be choosers. So I met with her, and I was like, all right, it's a, it's the job is different from what I was hiring, what I was doing before. So it was like a different place. And mm-hmm. I mentioned I'm like in a different place right now. Like I had the podcast has grown. I had the Patreon community. I had all these other projects that I picked up um, while I was in the middle of COVID. Mm-hmm. So, I was like, okay, and this works for me. So I ended up basically getting my old job back. Um, mm-hmm. But I earned more money, but I work remotely. So it, like, okay. it was like, it was a good deal. Like it really does, it really serves its purpose. So I now work in Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday from like 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, no, 7 a.m. So it's like, it's a weird time zone. So I, I live in two time zones. So essentially, I get daylight savings time every single day. Mm. Like at five o'clock, it's five o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It's like it's four o'clock. So COVID is fine. It's like it's been touch and go. It's been sure. like you know, there's a lot of things. I think there's expectation that we should be operating a hundred percent, and I'm not operating a hundred percent. I'm operating a probably fifty percent, and it's still pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, I haven't seen much of Chicago. I've seen my apartment. I like my apartment, so I'm grateful <laughs> for that. Um, but most of Chicago, like I've explored, like really, I think it's like a couple times a month. So it's, you know, it's just like it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you're making the best of it. And I, you know, I think that that's like so admirable that you you know, the end, the tail end of 2019 or all of 2019, you spent that time like thinking like, I'm going to go do this great new thing and it's going to be fantastic. And it's going to be a leap of faith and you do it. And then like a pandemic hits. I mean, you, there's no way to control that and you just make the best of it. And, you know, that's all you can do. And I know that because you and I are, I'm in your Patreon group and um, so we chat, we chat in that, we chat outside of that, you know, and it seems like you've built a really fantastic community within the book community for yourself, you know, so where at times, perhaps in the last seven months, and may have felt a smidge isolating, <laughs> having moved to a new state, a new city during a pandemic. <laughs> yeah. 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 Enough, like I actually made friends in the pandemic. Like I met, mm-hmm. I built a community in the pandemic. Like right. I have, like people I haven't seen. I only have met my neighbor, and I've talked to her like four or five times in real life. Mm-hmm. That's the like only in real life, other than essential workers. The people are the people in Starbucks. They know my name. Sure, uh, but other than that, like I haven't met like in real life friends. I'm I don't know. I don't have anyone to go indoor dining with. You know, but I don't feel alone. Like that's been the gift of it. Like even. Sure. Like we're in a brand new city because I've made solid friendships. Like I have people I talk to. Like I talk to you every day. I mm-hmm. talk. To, Sarah calls me every morning. So I have friends who just like have touchstones that I have in place that allow me to feel connected and at the same time, sure. you know, be okay. Sure, sure. So that's that's a good segue to kind of talking about like podcasting Mm -hmm. um because you've built this community so let's kind of like back up a little bit and find out like how you built this community so when and why did you start podcasting so I started podcasting in 2015 I had a show called okay before and it was a it was a name not safe for work nsfw and kinder career show like 45 minute interviews let's talk about your work life and I realized I think six months into it that I hated the format and I was like I don't like 
po- I like podcasting. I mm. like talking to people, but I don't like editing. I don't like dealing with long episodes. So I ended up just scratching that show and doing a new show. I was in a, pl- in a period of unemployment. So my podcasting journey happens when I'm unemployed. Like, <laughs> like I'm like, oh, let's just start something else. <laughs> so That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I started a new show called Say Yes. And it was a 15-minute show where I invited guests to tell me their Say Yes moments. Like, their, their moments where they step outside of the comfort zone. And a background of my story is that I spent about five to six years in the middle of like eating disorder recovery process. And I would say a self-exploration journey. Um, so I was taking a lot okay. of fitness classes, like trying out different fitness classes, whatever modality was happening, um, trying different things that New York City was to offer. Um, so I kind of did like burlesque. I did like um, bar, like it was like whatever new and trendy was happening, I was trying it out. So I wanted to talk to other people okay. and try those things out. So I did that for about a year. And in that show, I had someone call someone who I follow, an influencer, talk about adult reading. And I was like, oh, this sounds like fine. So I that's where the reading journey happened. So I decided to put the podcast on hold because I was spending way too much time reading books. I was like, I don't want to edit. I just want to read all of this books. <laughs> and so yeah. I read, I think from between May to December, I read 275 books. Like it was like, I wow. really, really invested my time. Like I look at my Goodreads and I was like, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> so fast forward a year later, my friend Clara was like, let's start a podcast. I talk about books. Like she's a big reader. She has a library that I admire. Like she has so many books. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, let's talk about books. And so within a week, she was like, let's talk about Christmas books. And I was like, I have not read any Christmas books. So I had to find scrap and read one Christmas book. And I was like, okay, Mm -hmm. let's do an episode. So we did an episode of Christmas books and we decided we're like, we'll do it once a month and let's figure out like if it works. And so Mm -hmm. we only have one listener we downloaded within a month. So this was a shock because the other podcasts did really well. And I was like, okay, only one person downloaded the podcast. And I was like, (laughs) I guess we'll figure out the audience. So hey, we did this for a couple months. And then in March, I was like, I feel like I want to do this more often than just once a month. So I asked her mm-hmm. permission of that. It's okay. And she was really gracious. She's like, yeah, like you read more than I do. So you might as well. So I started mm-hmm. experimenting with this podcast. Um, I would say 2018 on. And I did it somewhat consistently until March of 2019. Okay. And I took a break. I was like, I'm, I realized I was doing it. I was trying to figure out my way, like figure out my way for reading, figure out my way for being in this book community. What was my purpose? What was my voice? And so, and who I wanted to bring the show. And so it got to the point that it was repetitive. Um, I was getting the same recommendations over and over. And so I was like, okay, this is really boring. And so I took a break and I pre- released a couple of episodes. Like there were three episodes I released during that time period that did really well Mm -hmm. like they got like five thousand downloads and like mind you one download to five thousand downloads is like for one episode like it's like it's a big job (laughs) so like all right it's interesting like people are downloading this this little show that i just did not realize it was going to be anything major so i attended book expo and book con um in 2019 i was like "Mm, maybe i'll start a podcast and it was I started connecting with publishers and I was like, you know, let me just see if that's a, if there's an interest for author interviews. And so Mm -hmm. I just took a chance and decided to start doing it again. And I just redid the format. I did author interviews. I did less recommendations and it worked until it stopped working. So that's my story with podcasting is like, it's not, it hasn't been this linear process of like, just like, you know, like Mm -hmm. that it always, it's the whole format has been set in stone. It has changed, has evolved. And so I did this 
I think until the pandemic and the pandemic happened and then I started producing more episodes because I needed to connect with people. Sure. And so I was like, well, I want to talk to other people. So let me just bring them on the podcast. And let's, let's find a way to make friends. And so I recorded a bunch of episodes and publishers started noticing that I had the mm-hmm. show and they were like getting all these pitches for authors to come on the show. And I was like, and I couldn't say no. So I just over overextended myself and recorded like a million episodes. And so sure. now I'm like scrambling. I'm finally back into the place where it's where it's at. And I realized like things have changed, things have evolved, and like my life as a reader has evolved and like my life in the book sure. community has changed. Um because it's like I finally like, come into terms of what works for me and what doesn't work for me, what doesn't work. But I needed to make mm-hmm. all those mistakes and I needed to go fall you know overextend myself and to realize like okay this works this doesn't work um for me to have a podcast that's gonna work um and so right yeah well and that's the thing I think a lot of us I say us because I think that there's like um I, I don't know really how to like classify it but I think that there are some people that are really content with being part of the community and like reading and talking about books. Mm -hmm. And that's fantastic. I love those people. I think that there are also people that are like, I want to not only read and talk about books, but I want to like, I want to take it to the next level. I want to create a community. I want to create, um, you know, I want to create something. And I feel like you and I are very similar. We sit like in that space, you know, like I want to create something and the, the something a lot of times you feel like you have an idea of what the something is and, but it's always changing. But I think a a big part of that is also a nature of like the book business Mm -hmm. and how it's changing, you know, like Mm -hmm. five years ago, the book business was very different than it is now. Like I used to host a podcast very similarly to yours. I did a lot of author interviews. I don't know how people found me, but they did because basically it started out with me just talking to like my friends. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then I hit the same thing, you know, and then you get overextended and then you're like, what am I even doing? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I I don't want to read this book. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) And so you kind of have to say like, okay, it evolved to this point, but now it's okay to like pivot. I think that sometimes that word gets overused, but that's exactly what it is. And you know, you have evolved as a reader and a part of this community. So why wouldn't your podcast evolve? Right. Mm -hmm. Like nobody wants to stay stagnant. Mm -hmm. Well, they shouldn't want to, but maybe they do. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. I think for me, like, it's just like, I needed to change. Like I'm one of those people who just like out of the box thinker, who's like, looks at the stuff and looks at the problem and try to fix it and try to create something. And so Mm -hmm. I get bored really easily. And so things change. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I had to get right. more quick here about even the people I come to a show. Like, I had to say to gas, I'm like, I don't want to talk about Tessa Dare, <laughs> you know, not that I don't mind, like, but it's just like we've talked about her right. at extent. And I don't want to talk right. about XYZ, other other authors that are really popular authors, because it's like you got to mm-hmm. the point where you're like, okay, I want to hear somebody else. So it's like right. in a place of like just say, because I want to discover new authors. That's the whole point. The whole point of the show is for, for me to, it's very selfish. It's for me to find what I need, what I should read next. Like, you know, like what books should I read? What author should I discover? Mm-hmm. Like, and so I look for that opportunity to have those conversations to get right. that. And so hopefully sure. my, my hope is for you as a listener is to, for you to discover new authors for you to check out or new opportunities to try out something new. Sure. All right, so let's talk a little bit about, excuse me, the nuts and bolts of podcasting for anybody who's kind of interested because, you know, people like to know these things. So one of the big things about podcasting is money. (laughs) I don't, I say, I kind of laugh about that and I say in podcasting, but I think that it's something that across the board, reviewers, bloggers, con- let's call ourselves content creators. Mm-hmm. Content creators are curious to know how they can turn a hobby, if and how they can turn a hobby into something that generates money. So 
Um, you did you have started monetizing the show, correct? Yes, correct. Right. So, what are your main revenue streams? It was from that. So there's a couple. Or things. how, yeah, from so that. There's a couple things. Um, I chose to be part of the Farlight Network. Um, that this happened during the pandemic. I was very hesitant. I was like, I'm not sure, like, if I'm network ready. <laughs> you know, my head was like, I'm not, I'm, mm-hmm. when would it be network ready? And so I pitched it fit to Farlight and said, like, hey, I have this show. Um, there's some women's in it, like, it's mainly women's, but there's other genres. Would you be interested? And so they were really open with it. And I was mm-hmm. like, okay, it seems we, it was a good partnership. So I was like, all right, we'll do this. And so through Falling Network, they sell ads on my behalf. So every month okay. I will have one ad or two ads per month. Um, where in, and the ads are not like I'm selling something like, you know, some weird product. Like I'm selling books. So, and most of the time right. I read the book. So it's like, I'm just telling you the book that I read or a book that you should pick up. And so those ads, I make some money from it. Mm-hmm. And the money is like, it's less than $50 a month. So it's not like, but it covers the cost, essentially covers the cost of hosting. So I had to pay for the hosting of the show. So the more shows I produce, the more it costs to produce. So it's, so I pay like $50 a month for hosting. So the money that I earn from ads, it covers that cost. So Mm -hmm. that's where it it just evens out. Um, And then I also started a Patreon community and this happened around the same time. So the Patreon community um, was a, was a result of trying to figure out like ways for me to connect with the community. Um, Because Mm -hmm. part of it can be really lonely. Like, Mm -hmm. and my show doesn't get like all these like, I, I would say, like, all these mentions and all these, like, I listen to your show, I listen to your show. Like, I don't get that. And I'm fine with that. Like, that's not the purpose mm-hmm. of the show. So I wanted to connect with other readers and to talk about other books. I wanted to get a feedback of, like, what works, what doesn't work. So I started a Patreon book club. And it was a book club because I wanted to meet other friends. This is early pandemic, like, mm-hmm. connection. I'm, like, isolated in Chicago. So so I started with – we started with a book club. And it was, like, Book Grown Nations. And I was, like, all right, let's see, you know, someone joins in. And so um, within a few weeks, I had people coming in. I was, like, okay, I guess I'm – you know, we got something going on. And – the gift is not the money. It's like, it's, it's a nice little part, but the reality is I love the people. Like I've made friends through the Patreon community and it just, it serves the purpose, the same purpose of why I have the show is to make friends. It's like mm-hmm. the same, the purpose I'm getting from the community. And it's been a really nice little community. We meet twice a month. Um, I come up with recommendations and I, I, I forget, like, I just assume, like, nobody reads the emails, and they're, like, and the members are, like, yeah, I, I get, I like your email, like, you should write this in your email, I'm, like, okay, so it's, like, it's kind of, like, a fun little project that has allowed me to be creative, to think about what I'm reading, to think about, like, how it can actually be of service to the community, mm-hmm. to create a place for, her, and that is a safe place to share recommendations, to share, like, what's going on, and to figure out, like, you know, what's to mm-hmm. be next sure and <clears throat> i like i already mentioned i am part of your patreon i do love it um i think it is a great group of people um share rex um you know i think you are very active on instagram i am very active on twitter mm-hmm. um so we have some overlap with those which is great <clears throat> but one of the things that i have been kind of recognizing on my time at Twitter, which I love and I'll somebody I'll have to pry it out of my hand before I give it up, but it can be hard to have like a reader space on Twitter because it's very open to anybody, which is which is great actually. But sometimes there can be some negatives to that because like if you're reading a book and you know an author follows you, it's like do I talk about it? Do I not talk about it? Whatever. Or people can feel, uh, you know, I think it's just the nature of Twitter and social media in general that people can feel very, like, um, attacked about something that that's not intended to, you know. So it can be hard to have that reader space. But then your group chat is a really great place to kind of, I think everybody in there is great. We all have very different tastes. Mm -hmm. Um, But you've created a space where we can talk about those books and somebody can say, oh, that book didn't work for me. Or, 
you know, and it's fine. Everybody just keeps moving on with their lives. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, you know, every now and again, somebody may, might be like, what? I can't believe that. But more like in a joking way or something. But <laughs> it, it is great to get the recommendations. And, um, you know, it, it has allowed me to meet people that I probably wouldn't have met, mm-hmm. um, you know, through even Instagram. Because, because like I said, I'm not a heavy Instagram user. So that has been fantastic. And just the discussion of books, especially during this pandemic time where, you know, I think we're all looking for some sort of connection and because we can't just like go hang out. None of us are going to book events like we used to Mm -hmm. and all these other things. So it's really great. So, okay. Just a couple more questions about podcasting. So the money that you're making is basically balancing out on how expensive it is to run because it's so expensive like you mentioned hosting then the equipment <laughs> equipment so i pay for the zoom so i pay annual for the zoom so i don't i don't think about it but i pay zoom um so mm-hmm. that's on the cost um i also pay for the calendar um how to how to guest book themselves so i pay for it oh right them. so that's the cost and then i think those are like my major costs right now um i some of the initial expenses i have i have a microphone and i had a microphone for five years so like i just invested in a new microphone like earlier this year um because I realized mm-hmm. my sound was in the backyard and I was like, well, maybe I'll invest in the new microphone. So there's like some initial investment and then there's like the investment of the stuff. And then there's the yeah. investment of time. So I choose to edit my episodes. So that means like on most Sunday mornings you'll find me editing episodes. And mm-hmm. I'm not a thorough editor like pretty much you unless you tell me you don't want to air something out I may leave it as is like I'm not this is not my air forte like it's not something that I'm like I'm gonna invest a lot of time I just I just want a bookish conversation Mm -hmm. so you must you get that um but there's like the investment of time for that and just getting the process you know the scheduling and the different things Mm -hmm. that happen so take doing a podcast it takes about to do a show like monthly for like f- Monday through Friday show, which is the new cadence mm-hmm. that's happening, it takes me about ten to fifteen hours a week, um, just okay. to the whole thing. So whether sure. it's getting the links or getting the specifics or you know editing or scheduling the recordings, all of this happened within a week. Mm-hmm. So it's a so every day occurrence that I'm working on the podcast, right. It's basically a labor of love <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because uh, similar, similarly, like for blogging or whatever, you know, I, you, even the money that you earn, let's say you weren't paying on hosting and you were making money above and beyond that, even money above and beyond your expenses, it's still, it's like pennies on the dollar mm-hmm. versus how much time you spend it going into it. Um, so anybody who's listening, who is interested in podcasting, blogging, some sort of content creating, um, be forewarned. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't love it, just know. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. And there's a lot of thing. There's a lot of stuff to, when you think about book create, like content creator within the book world, there's a lot of reading that needs to get done. <laughs> so you have to mm-hmm. spend on top of all the other aspects. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but the, the one bright side, one very bright side, I should say, is that I'm sure you get access to a lot of books <laughs> very early and you typically don't have to pay for them. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just nice. yeah, it's it's been nice. Um, except that I realized for me that I actually don't do well with arcs. So that's something I, something I discovered. Like arcs are okay, but this is oh. not is okay. not what works for me. Like what works for me that gets me reading is backlist titles. So it's like okay, okay. okay. So this is like it's something I'm loud discovering. Is, the, is that I need backlist titles or discovering different titles or like that whole process mm-hmm. of it, that works better than just sure. all these like free books <laughs> yeah so 
Okay, so before we kind of wrap things up with some recommendations and some more fun things, tell us a little bit about what we can expect from the podcast moving forward. You mentioned a few moments ago about five days a week. So tell us about that. Yes. So we're going to go, we're going to go to Monday through Friday. I've been experimenting with three or four days and there, there's been weeks where there's like a bunch of author interviews because COVID happened and every author decided to release their book on August 25th. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so there were a lot of author interviews in August because there was like a big uh, publishing moment. Um, so what's going to happen is I'm going to uh, episodes are going to be shorter so there's going to be about 20 to 25 minutes episodes um so there's okay. going to be bite-sized episodes because that works well for me um where you get about 10 to 15 recommendations i'm gonna okay diversity with the recommendations so like i mentioned i've asked guests to bring different different recommendations not just what you typically hear so guests are coming with old school YA, old school historical fiction historical romance um, I had a thriller coming in, like, so a little bit of everything, um, different genres. There's mainly romance because that's what I consume, but there'll be other genres mm-hmm. in place. Um, there'll be author interviews, but there's, I'm going to scale them back. Like, it's okay. not going to be as heavy author interviews as it was over the summer. Um, because, like I said, I'm not, I don't do that well reading arcs. So, you know, I, it's, it's something I, I learned that the hard way when I realized I was like, mm-hmm. it's great to know early on, like what you like, what you don't like. And so I'm just going to go with authors that I'm excited about, authors that I know that I've done really well, um, that I like their books or read the backlist or their debut authors who may try them out. Um, mm-hmm. So I'll probably scale them back. So there's probably going to be like one or two author interview a week, um, which is, it's still more than enough. <laughs> there's like, yeah, there's like more. Um, but yeah, it's like more um, diversity within the genres and just okay. more recommendations. Um, hopefully you get to figure out what your next book is going to look like. Awesome. You know, and I think that, um, you know, right now for several years, actually, it's been like a reader's paradise, right? Like mm-hmm. you can like characters or a trope and find that trope or character in spades and never have to like look outside that and that's fine that that works I still I wholly support that but it can sometimes be a little overwhelming to find new voices the new tropes new themes um because especially when people continue to recommend the X's, the Y's, and the Z's, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and not to say that those aren't great books, great authors, all that, but, um, you know, it's like, let's, let's dig a little deeper. Let's, Mm -hmm. let's, because there are some, like, there are some fantastic mid-list authors Mm -hmm. or even like below mid-list authors that deserve so much recognition, but just aren't getting it because not enough people are talking about it or, you know, and that, that's fine. That's the, the, the way of the world. Um, but so I applaud you for like trying to get your guests to, to dig a little deeper mm-hmm. on these recommendations and, you know, highlight themselves and, you know, different things out there. So, um, all right, so now let's talk about a little bit about like book recommendations. Mm-hmm. What is your favorite romance trope? Forced proximity. So merge of okay. the big relationship. I love for that. I read them like as much as I can. I uh, read them historical. I read them in just I mean contemporary, but it, like fake dating is like my cat dev. Mm-hmm. I mean, who can go wrong with fake dating? <laughs> I wouldn't do it myself, but I love it when there's like right I, each other when they're opposites attract. Like I'm like, send me like all these different vibes. Or you're like, you're not supposed to, and if there's just one bad, even better. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, um, any quirky things about your reading life? <sighs> Let's see. I actually, I discovered I like audiobooks recently. Um, mm. I had, I had Audible and Libro FM like memberships for a while and I just never used them. And then fairly recently I discovered that I can actually bench listen to to books. 
And so that's mm-hmm. when something fun to do. Um, I get mad. I actually, I talk about my reading life in therapy and that's something mm-hmm. that's really, mm-hmm. that my therapist think is like so weird. I was like, you don't understand. Like, this is an important part of my life. It's a really, sure. like for me, like the fact that I couldn't read a book a day last year or the past two years was really strong, was, was a big struggle that I did talk about this. Like, cause I was like, my reading life in 2018, 2019 was I was reading a lot of arts and I was reading a lot of trendy books and I did Mm -hmm. not like them. And so I had, I I was like trying to figure out what was a problem. Mm -hmm. What was the issue? Was it me? Was it the book? Like what is going on? And so I would spend time in therapy. I was paying for it to talk about my reading life. So Nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that. That's when I discovered, I think it took me not being in therapy <laughs> it took me the summer like fairly recently to realize like oh it's just like I can arts and just mm-hmm. trendy books don't work for me like I actually need to find myself like a place to discover a new book or mm-hmm. try to discover a new author to me and try to devour the bench and go back to the backlist like that feels really exciting mm-hmm. that feels really in alignment so that's what I need to do for myself Hey, you know, and you and I have talked about this like offline, like do what you need to do to take care of yourself. And, you know, if that's, if that's what you do now and maybe later it changes again, that's, that's great. You know, like I think a lot of times, like as content creators, we can really get focused on like the content that we think we should be providing versus the content that we really just like the content of our hearts like (laughs) and that's especially when you and not to bring it back to money but a lot of times things come back to money Mm -hmm. and especially when it is truly a labor of love and you're making enough to basically keep the lights on Mm -hmm. like why not do what makes you the happiest with it Mm -hmm whatever that may be. Yeah. So, all right. Tell us at least one book that you cannot stop gushing about. Um, the ones that got away by Karina Holly. That was like a surprise, um, surprise read. I have not read her in years. Like I would say like three or four years. I have not read her book. And the third book in a series. So I was like, it's like you weird. Um, but the, the, the problem the issue was the the reason why this book was like so touching it was it was set in Lisbon and like I traveled to Lisbon about in 2017 so three years ago I went to Lisbon and so I was there and I fell in love with the city it's like San Francisco but cheaper it's so pretty and I spent the whole week like reading I it was like a slow vacation of like I did everything that I wanted to do for myself and it was just like I went to get some tapas I got I got paseanata and I did I traveled around I went to I went to the beach and I had a book in my hand like I was Mm -hmm. reading at the time Lex and Lake and so it was just one of those like magical vacations that I wanted to revisit and so when I read her book, it said in Lisbon and it said in all the different mm-hmm. places that existed. It. Like she mentioned my favorite neighborhood, she mentioned the beaches, she mentioned the bus mm-hmm. and that. And so it felt like I was traveling there. And mm-hmm. like it was angsty, but it wasn't too angsty. So I was like, and there were, the conflicts were not miscommunication or like typical conflicts. They were like, they were just like conflicts of like, okay, like they were not meant to be together, but they were meant to get together. It's like so I felt like it was just like a traveling around the world. So I sat down and read it in like one evening and it was just like magical. Like I felt mm. like I was just there. Um, mm-hmm. And it was one of those few books that I read for the podcast. And I'm so grateful that I did. Okay. So you got to interview Karina? I'm interviewing her this week. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm excited to hear about that one. Um, I read a ton. I like binged her years ago. Like I would like wait up for her books to be released and be like, I can't go to bed. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, I was like, then, yeah. And then just with anything, it's it's hard to keep up sometimes when people publish so many books and there are also so many other books being published, but. So it sounds like the podcast moving forward is it's going to be scaled down a little bit to bite-sized episodes, which I think is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I think that even now in the pandemic, everybody is just overwhelmed 
with information and what they're, you know, working from home, if they have children, caring for the children who are also home and just unbelievable, you know, types of things that we're dealing with these days. So, you know, from thinking about myself, like a good 20, 30 minutes is like a perfect time to like devote to something before I have to go move on to something else. Um, So that's perfect. I also... Like I said, you and I have talked about this a lot. I really, really admire not only the way that you kind of just like on a whim, I mean, not on a whim, but like you really worked yourself up to making this change in your life and then you moved and everything just like (laughs) basically for lack of a better word, went to shit. So, (laughs) which you can't control and you just made the best of it and you built yourself this community and you really look at it and say like, what is it that I want? Like you said, meant a couple of times, like what do you feel like your purpose is and how you feel like you can serve this community? And, you know, I just think that's so wonderful because I think a lot of times, a lot of people are looking at it the opposite way and like, what can this community do for me Mm -hmm. um, versus the other way? And, um, you know, but everybody has their own path and I respect that. So, all right. Is there anything else that you want to tell the listeners that we didn't get to talk about? They should pick out you just or each other. <laughs> we both agree. Oh, <laughs> yes. Both they need to pick out. Either you're going to love it or you're going to hate it. We right. Should it and give it a try. Yes. <laughs> yes. You deserve, you deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogel is one of the best books that, that I've read this year. Um, I have read it twice on the, the e-galley that I got. I own it in print. I own the e-copy, the digital copy. And I am now the proud owner of the audiobook, which I am halfway through. <laughs> so this will be the only book that I think I've read three or more times. The only other book I think I've read three or more times is are two books, Heaven and Hell by Kristen Ashley and Lady Luck also by Kristen Ashley. <laughs> um, I contain multitudes, but that book is so good. And I... To anybody else who's listening, or yes, I also recommend reading it in print or the digital copy, copy, and then listening to it mm-hmm. because the the audio for it, the narrator on that, she's so good, so good, she really is, and you can she helps bring to life some of like the pettiness, mm-hmm. but also like it which again, because it's the third time I've read it, (laughs) I'm not surprised by any of it, but it's helping me also again to see like actually how deeply they do love each other, even though they, they think that they don't love each other. Mm -hmm. They think that they hate each other, but that is not true. They're just going through a path where they really need to work on things and think about like, how can they sustain this long term? So anyway, my one of my favorite recs is like a mar- or a trip's marriage in trouble mm-hmm. or like relationship in trouble, which this is, and it's so funny. So <laughs> yes, but anyway, I do. I own it an audio ebook, arc, and the print. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I know. I have like the full trifecta. I don't like it's delightful. Either you're gonna yeah. love it or you're gonna hate it. And yeah, fine, but. Hold yeah <laughs> yeah I think there was at least like two people like in your patreon group that said they didn't like it and I'm like what no <laughs> I, I was like it's delightful <laughs> yes what is wrong with you <laughs> but it we is can't okay. be friends anymore it is no. okay it's either one star or five star to see where you which team you are in <laughs> right absolutely so once anybody who listens to this episode and then they either have read it or then they go to read it, please report back to Laura to tell her what you thought, and then she will tell me, and we can either be friends from that or not. No, I'm just teasing. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you so much, Laura. This was so much fun to interview you and learn more about your journey and podcasting and kind of how that has evolved for you and continues to evolve for you. So thank you so much for letting me be part of this. Thank you, Kenny. And so tell us where you can find you online. 
So you can find me on Twitter. Um, my handle is at Kini Lay One. So that's K-I-N-I-L-E-I, then the numeral one. I am on Instagram at the numeral one Kini Lay. Um, I don't post a lot on Instagram except for my stories where I post pictures of my cat all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I also review and I am the co-operator slash co-blogger of smexybooks.com. So you can find me there as well. Awesome. Thank you, Kimi. Thanks, Laura. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, or rate and review the show. This is the easiest way to support this podcast. Want to join a romance loving community? Want weekly book recommendations, monthly author Q&As, and book recommendation meetups? Make new friends? Then join our Patreon community. To sign up, please follow the links in the show notes. What to Read Next Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts to love on frolic.media slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.